everybody! Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. This is my husband Kevin. And today we are out in one of our big gardens taking a look at what needs to be harvested. Pretty much everything is starting to come to an end here in the garden. Our tomatoes are really wrapping up. Uh, our cucumbers are about done. Beans have been done for a while. Uh, we're starting to harvest pinto beans and take those into the house. And today we're out here by our butternut squash. Now these butternut squash are actually called Canada Crookneck. They're a type of butternut squash. And we decided to try them this year because from what we've read, they will be the best at fighting off the squash beetles. And I'll tell you, it looks like they were a success. There are a bunch out here. They're also supposed to be a very good storage squash. So even though we're getting a lot of them, uh, they should last all winter for food for our family. We never expected the numbers that we actually have here. So we're excited to get a final number. Uh, we're completely blown away with how prolific they are. We did plant an entire 50 foot row of them. Um, so maybe we should have known ahead of time, but we didn't know how productive they were gonna be, but it was a total success and I'm super excited to start harvesting. Now we do have some rain moving into our area as part of the hurricane that's hitting the southern part of the United States. So we want to get these out of the garden before all of that rain comes here and suddenly there's a big influx of water because we've really pretty much been in a drought. Uh, we've had to be using our drip irrigation system about every two or three days in the garden to keep things alive. Uh, so uh, if suddenly we get, you know, two or three inches of rain in a short amount of time, uh, that wouldn't be good for all of these squash. So we need to get these out of the garden today. Let's walk around and take a look at them. I'm excited to show you what they look like when they are ripe and ready to be harvested versus those that need to stay out here for a little bit longer. First thing that you'll notice here is that all of our vines are really dying back. They're turning yellow. Some of them are already brown and dead. And that is really a sure sign that these squash are ready to start being harvested. But also the, squ the squash themselves will tell you when they're ready to be harvested. Now over here you can see there's a, a beautiful squash on the ground here. It's a nice dark color and the skin is kind of dry and almost dull. It's not bright, it's not shiny. So this one here is ready to be harvested. You can also look up here to, at the stem. The stem here is not green, it's starting to turn brown. In some cases, these might be completely dry before you start harvesting. But because we're under a time pressure with this rain coming in, we're gonna go ahead and harvest today. But I do wanna show you a couple others that are not ready to be harvested and that are gonna stay out here. This squash here is almost still green. You can see there's some green in it. Uh, it's not nearly this dark color here you can see. Also the stem part is bright green yet. You can still see there's life going into here. It's still growing and getting bigger. So this is not ready to be harvested. And one that's kind of in the middle and could be kind of on the fence whether or not you should harvest it is also right here. You can see it's starting to darken up, similar to that, but it's also still kind of light and almost green like that one. So once you get an idea of what you're looking for, then it's a lot easier to determine when your squash are ready to be harvested. So two of the squash right in front of me here are ready to be harvested. And I wanna show you something that's very important. When you're harvesting these, you want to keep on quite a bit of the stem. On this squash here, you can see that I left about two inches on there. And this is actually right where it connected to the vine. Some cases you can use a scissors or a knife, but these are really hard right now. I would actually need kind of like a trimmer or something like that. Or if you're really careful, you can just pop that right off of the vine making sure that it stays connected to the squash. Now, the reason you're doing that is to prevent bacteria, mold, other things from getting into your squash that can compromise the squash in long-term storage. You want this to be able to dry, cure, and seal off 
so that nothing can get down there and ruin it. It's been growing all summer. I want it to last as long as possible until we can get it inside and eat it sometime this winter. So we're gonna continue harvesting these squash and we're gonna move them to cure into a dry, sunny, warm location that won't get any rain. They need to stay there for two weeks. Okay guys, well we got them all harvested. I cannot believe how many there are. Kevin and I have both counted and I counted 59. Kevin counted 61, so we're gonna average that out to 60. This is a fantastic harvest. I cannot even believe it. They are like so gorgeous. I can't wait to start eating them. Now there are a few that we need to um, do something with immediately because remember we were worried about them splitting and a couple of them have actually split. Um, there's a couple that have split in the past and have kind of healed over. Uh, there's one over here that looks like maybe, I don't know, a bird got at it or something like this. So these are all going to come into the house and I'm going to do something with them right away, whether that means I make a giant batch of soup and freeze it or if I can some of them in chunks or freeze them in chunks, I'm not sure yet. But that's what we're gonna do with these here that need attention right away. Any bits that are too yucky for us will give to the pigs. They will absolutely love it. All these guys back here, we're going to cure in a warm, uh, dry, well-ventilated place. Kevin and I talked about several options for us, where to put these. But because we've got raccoons and, and mice and things that could come and eat these, we're afraid to keep them outside or in the greenhouse or in a barn. So now that we don't have visitors, we're going to lay these out um, in our guest cabin where it's warm, dry, well ventilated, and let these cure for two weeks. But we are so excited to have these for the winter. This is going to be great eating. And we've grown enough that we can share some with neighbors and friends. So this is like the best outcome that could possibly happen for these squash. Now these seeds, remember they're called Canada Crookneck. Originally we got these from Baker Creek. Make sure you check them out if you're interested in growing these next year. We will be able to harvest and save some of the seeds for ourselves to use uh, from you know year after year now. But one thing is for sure, these guys did so well that we are definitely going to continue planting these in the future. It's the next morning. We ended up getting rained out for a second time yesterday. Actually, all in all, I think about three or four times we ended up getting rained out and having to go in the house for a while, come back out. But the last time was it. It came down pretty hard, and so we had to just be done for the day. Luckily, we got all of those butternut squash moved into our guest cabin, so they're nice and safe in there, and they can cure for the next couple weeks. There are a couple things that we want to do before the big rains come, and that has mostly to do with seed saving. We have some sunflowers. They're at the back of the garden. They're completely done for the season. So the first seeds that we're gonna harvest today are the heads of sunflowers. This year we planted a variety of sunflowers called Mammoth Gray Stripe. We originally got the seeds from Baker Creek. They're probably about 15 feet tall and we really only need the top part. We only need the, the big flower off the top. So I'm gonna cut these with just a regular loppers right about in the middle so that we can get that top part down. Now these will be saving some of the seeds to replant for next year, but honestly, we don't need a whole lot. We need probably 50 seeds at most. The rest of these will be saving the seeds to actually feed to the animals over the winter, mostly the chickens. So let's cut one of these down and take a look at it. Ha! I wasn't sure that was gonna work. 
Now that we have this cut down, we can take a better look at it. And you can see that the flower part is dried up. So that tells us that it's done and ready to harvest for seed. Now if you look, there's all these little bitty flowers on the inside here. If we rub our hand over that, those will actually come right off and then we can actually see the sunflower seeds underneath that. And that's the part that we want to be able to dry and use for seed and to feed to the animals. So you can see just all of those sunflower seeds in there. Now, obviously I'm not gonna try to count them, but I would guess there's at least a thousand seeds on just one of these heads here. So that's all we'll do to it for now is we will rub all of that stuff off and then we'll actually find a place that we can hang these, mostly so that mice and rats and things don't get into them and eat them while they're drying. But we'll just hang these until they're completely dry and then we'll find a nice secure place to store them until winter. And then in the winter we can either break these apart and get all the individual seeds out or we can actually just give this to the chickens the way it is and they'll get the seeds out themselves so uh, i'm excited to have these uh, we've got quite a few we didn't plant a whole lot we planted one row here at the back of the garden so obviously it's not going to be enough to feed the animals uh, just by themselves over the winter but it'll be a nice little supplement for them so we're going to go ahead and cut all of these down now from this this section here you can see this is a little bit smaller uh, sunflower we did do part of the row in a different variety those aren't quite ready to harvest yet. Today, we're just gonna do these big, tall ones. a lot of leaf-footed bugs on them. Look how beautiful those seeds are. I'm excited to have these for the chickens. Sunflowers are just so beautiful in the garden. I oftentimes forget to plant them, but they are such a joy to see when you look out into the garden. So now that the sunflowers are done, we're gonna move on to the pinto beans. We've actually harvested like three quarters of the pinto beans already. All these vines are empty, but we do have some on the other row that are ready to go. The pinto beans I love because you could just plant them in the ground. They grow up a trellis and you can really forget about them until they're ready to harvest. And I can harvest a little bit here and a little bit there as I have some extra time. And then in the end, they all add up to a wonderful harvest of pinto beans. You can keep them dry in the house until you're ready to cook them up, or you can can them. It's a wonderful thing. So we've got some that we're gonna harvest over here on the second row, and we'll show you how easy it is and just how beautiful these pinto beans are. You can see over here, just these dry bean pods. These are just perfect little pods with gorgeous beans inside. Let me take my gloves off. Look at those. These are called tiger eye beans. And we love the taste of them. The flavor is just really nice and creamy, perfect for refried beans, which is really the main reason that we plant pinto beans. We love refried beans here on the homestead. So we're gonna get picking these, put them in our basket so we can let them finish drying in the house. The last thing that we have to harvest out of the garden today 
are some green beans. Now, we're not going to harvest them green today. Uh, our green bean season is actually over. We've harvested and canned all that we need uh, for this coming year and some extra. So now we've decided to let the beans that are left go to seed. We're going to let them dry on the plants and we're going to harvest seed that we need for next year. Now this year we had a very hard time finding contender green bean seeds and those are our absolute favorite green beans to grow. We got some early in the spring from Baker Creek like we always do, but we actually had a real problem with getting our beans to sprout this year, not because of a seed issue, but because of the crazy weather that we had in the spring. Uh, we planted all of our beans and then we just got so much rain uh, that I think a lot of them actually ended up rotting in the ground before they were actually able to sprout. And then we had to go back and we had to replant about half of our green beans. When we went to get more seed, Baker Creek was out of them and all of this COVID stuff started and it just seemed like seeds were out everywhere. So it was a very hard time finding some. So we don't want that same problem next year because if I had to bet, I would bet next year is going to be kind of the same way. A lot of new people getting into gardening, a lot of new people starting to prepare and maybe keep extra seeds on hand. So I think it's going to be harder and harder to find good quality seeds as we go down the road. So if you can save some for yourself, I think that's the best thing to do. So let's take a look at our contender green bean plants and I'll show you what we're doing with them. Now, like I said, our green bean season is over as far as actually picking them for eating. So you can see that we still have quite a few beans on the plant of various sizes. These are still pretty green, but they're starting to ripen. And we'll let these all ripen. Here's one that's almost ready to pick, but it needs a little bit longer. Now here is one that's already dried. And this would be one that we would collect for the seed. So let me open this up and show you what these beans look like inside. They're just a solid white bean. And we will take these in the house, we'll, we'll open these all up, we'll let them dry, and then we'll be able to save these for replanting next year. We plant about 200 green bean plants each year to supply the needs for our family for the, for the winter. So we'll need at least 200 seeds, but if our experience from this year is the same, we'll probably actually need three or 400 seeds uh, just to make sure we have plenty and that we can get a good crop next year. So we'll be picking plenty of these to save for seed and putting them away for next spring. Here is the harvest that we got today all to save for seeds for next year. So we've got seven big sunflower heads. Which again, I'm not gonna count the seeds, but it's somewhere around a jillion. <laughs> and we got a nice basket of pinto beans. Now we didn't do all of them. There's still some uh, out there and we actually have a full bushel basket of them in the house that we need to go through. So we'll use what we need out of these for seeds and then the rest will go into our food supply. Right. And the green bean pods, just the beginning of them, uh, we'll be able to continue harvesting seed out there for quite a while. Right, yeah. We will hopefully be able to get even more than we need for next year, so that'll be good. Yeah. While we were out there, we grabbed a couple of super duper overripe cucumbers so that we can start harvesting seed for them. Now we have both Dar and Market Moore. They were planted too close together if you wanna keep the seeds true and not cross pollinate, but really we're gonna harvest seeds for them just for emergency. Right. Uh, we wanna have some seeds on hand just in case we can't get any cucumber seeds next year. And we like both of those varieties, right. so even if they did cross, uh, for us, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Also, I wanted to show you that, uh, you know, yesterday we harvested about 60 butternut squash and we tried one. It was fantastic. And right. we saved the seeds out of them. Yeah, we had one for dinner last night. Yeah. So these are the seeds that are going to go into our stockpile of seeds as well. So basically, it was a total success. We're super happy with our Canada crookneck uh, butternut type squash harvest. 
We're so excited to be able to eat on those all winter. It's awesome that we're at the point where we can start saving some of our seeds. We haven't done a whole lot of videos with that topic of saving seeds. Uh, it's still pretty new to us. We're still learning every year. Right, but we do have a great resource. Uh, it was actually recommended to us by uh, the folks over at Baker Creek. Uh, last year when we actually grew some plants to save the seeds for them, uh, they recommended that we get this book. It is called Seed to Seed, and it is just an amazing book. If there is a plant that you can grow in your garden and you want to save seeds out of, I can almost guarantee it's going to be in this book. It's got a lot of pictures. It takes you step by step on exactly how to save the seeds out of each plant because some things, even like the cucumbers, can be pretty tricky. Yeah. Uh, you need to ferment them for a while and then you need to save the seeds a certain way. Uh, so this will walk you through step by step how to do that. Uh, we do have a link to this in our Amazon shop if you guys want to pick it up. But it's a, it's a great resource to have, uh, especially in times when all of us need to start saving more seeds each year. So you guys, I hope that you enjoyed spending some time with us to see our amazing harvest of our winter squash and to see that we are doing some seed saving this year. We do encourage that you save some seeds this year as well. But... Yeah, the garden is starting to wrap up. It's always kind of a bittersweet time of year. It seems like as excited as you are for the garden to get started in the spring, uh, you're almost as excited for it to wrap up in the fall because we plant a lot and it's a lot of work to keep all of that going. Uh, so it's kind of nice to see it coming to an end, but this part of it and getting ready, preparing already for next year is really nice. You guys, we hope you enjoyed spending time with us today. Make sure that if you haven't hit the sub subscribe button below, you do that. That way you're notified when we put out new videos. Also, the best way for you to help us here on the homestead is to share our videos. We would much appreciate it. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.